grab your Bibles. We're going to go to the book of Revelations. I'm going to go back there. I touched on it a little bit, but I want to go to Revelations chapter 19. And I want to read the first 10 verses. Revelations 19, starting at verse 1. I had the privilege. Yesterday, I was, I was truly blessed. I was invited to be a part of this podcast about the end times. And, and um, it just blessed my soul. We just talked about the Word of God and, and what God is doing now. And, and I want to say that I want to share a prophetic word this morning. God just been speaking to me and opening my understanding. And, and I, I want to read this. And then I, there's a couple of things uh, I want to read. But I want to start here. Revelations 19. Verse 1 says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah, for her smoke rose up forever and ever, and the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a new voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Right blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are true saints of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of the brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You may be seated. If you're watching this morning, I want you to share it. I believe that what the Lord has to say is going to shift your life. I believe that the Lord is going to shift some things this morning. God just began to speak to me prophetically, and it's going to shift your life personally, but as well corporately in what God is doing in his hour right now in the church. I want to read something to you that somebody gave me a prophetic word over 10 years ago that didn't make sense to me, but it's applicable now. Some good friends, and I'm going to read this. It was September in 2012. And... Um, the Holy Spirit, when I was praying this morning, said to me, you need to find this because it'll make sense now. It says, R&R &R is my end time church. This model, others will follow. It says, because it's not a state church, you have the ability to tell the truth. Do not be afraid to tell the truth, for it is the truth that sets people free. I've called you for such a time as this, and as you continue to walk in obedience, I will be revealing things to you that I haven't revealed to others. Don't be afraid to share it. You have been preparing my sheep to hear and to have ears to hear and eyes to see. They have learned to trust you, therefore they will listen. Don't be concerned about those who turn a deaf ear. I am separating the sheep from the goats for a reason. Surrounding yourself with like-minded people is of utmost importance in these last days. Some have allowed their minds to become imprisoned and they being held captive by their own thoughts. I am the only true God to remove the scales from their eyes. And as you continue to speak the truth, the scales will start to fall and they will believe. This was over 10 years ago. And so I just had it. You know, I like Google because you can find stuff. And so um, the Lord told me this morning to go look at that and read it. And it's applicable to what God's been speaking to me. So I mentioned when I got up about being asked. So, this, so and Miss June, if you're watching, love you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, she said she had been praying for over a year. And uh, the Lord told her. And I hadn't been preaching about the end times or anything. But 
Uh, she said, the Lord said, I was the person that was supposed to come. And we were there, and, and it, was, it was a podcast, but it was more of a discussion, and we talked and shared scripture. And then the Lord was there. I mean, it was just such a blessing. And, and the Spirit of the Lord was moving, and he began to flow. And, um, and I couldn't stop looking at what God was saying. And so I was praying and said, I want to give you three things and I'm going to deal with this. So I'm going to try to finish today. If not, I'll finish it next week. But three things God revealed to me about the church. He said, there's a preparing church. There's then a prophetic church and a pure church. And this happens and it's happening uh, I don't want to say stages, but in progression. So you have a preparing church, which he told me is now. And I want to talk about that. And then he said a prophetic church, which is coming. And a pure church. And all of this is to get us ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, if you don't know what that is, the marriage supper of the Lamb is a culminating event for Christian believers, uh, when, a, when Christ is returning uh, with the armies of heaven uh, to bring final judgment upon the earth and mankind. And a lot of people don't talk about it because it seems kind of scary, but if you prepare it, it ain't scary. And so when I was reading this, it's interesting that when you look at these scriptures, because God is dealing with some of us even now. It said that the great whore, which is the spirit of harlotry, uh, through fornication, calls the earth to be corrupt. That includes the church. God said to me, that's what's happening now. That there's corruption that is caused. Cause it, and when you look at 1 Corinthians, and um, it talks about this in, in chapter 6. How that if you join yourself to a harlot, that word harlot is the same as the great whore. So it says if you join yourself, you become one flesh. But if you join yourself to God, you become one spirit. And so what he's saying to us is that this spirit of harlotry, of idolatry, of corruption has caused the earth to walk in the flesh, which doesn't have the ability to come before God. So it created the absence of of the power of God in the church because the church is fleshly. See, the Bible says no flesh shall glory in his presence. And it also says in Romans chapter 8 that it is impossible for us to even come before him in our flesh. Yes. And so what is happening and has happened is that what you have is a church. I've been praying the same, and y'all probably notice this. I pray 1 Corinthians chapter 2, every single Sunday. I've been doing this I don't know how many years, just out of obedience. But those verses say in verse 5 that our faith should not rest in the wisdom of men, but the power of God. But if you look around, church, all of us, many of us, our faith is based on how articulate and charismatic the preacher is. We flock to preachers not because there's power, but because he sound good. If certain preachers show up in St. Louis right now, you ain't running to get healed to deliver. You're coming to hear a good sermon. God says that I am preparing my church in the midst of carnality. But it ain't easy because we've been used to being fed flesh God said I'm judging the great whore the spirit of idolatry and avenging my saints because the earth is corrupt because of this and so I asked God a question I said God how are you preparing us because um some of y'all, listen, this corruption is tearing us up. 
Y'all hear me? This is impacting everybody. I'm watching leaders fall because of this corruption. You know, I'll say his name because it's public, but when Ravi Zachariah, who I really admired, failed and, and he failed and then it began to come out that for years. Here's a man who was anointed and gifted to, to discern and break down scripture, but for years he was abusing women all over the globe. And it messed up the church world because everybody loved Ravi. Somebody need to hear me. But God ain't impressed with how intelligent we are. Paul said that I'm deciding that I don't know anything except for Christ and him crucified because I going to mess this thing up. And so God said to me, in the midst of this corruption, I am preparing a church that's going to worship me. Yeah. 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 I want you to understand something. Jesus gives this parable in Matthew 22, and I'm not going to go through all of it, but verses 2 through 14, a king um, has this supper, and it's a marriage supper for his son. It's, 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 it's a parable about the marriage supper of the Lamb. But I just want to point out a couple things that he invited folk and it said there was a group of people that took it lightly. There's another group of people that dismissed it. There's another group of people that killed the servants for inviting them. And then he says to his son, nobody is worthy to come to the wedding. So go invite everybody, the good and the bad. But there was a man there who show up with no robe. And I'm going to deal with that. And the robe, according to Revelation 19, the white fine linen, the robe represents the righteousness of his servant. So in other words, he says, ain't nobody righteous here. And he said, get that man without the robe and cast him in the outer darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing the teeth. I, I want y'all to understand something. God ain't playing. We have become so comfortable being carnal and fleshy and in our feelings and the going the way of Cain. And the reality is that ain't righteousness. But the church has made us think that we're going to show up at the marriage supper of the Lamb filthy and be okay. But it's some of y'all in here who love Jesus and God uncovering. It ain't punishment. He preparing you. It's, 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 and so I asked this question. I said, God, how, 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 how? I want you to understand in Revelation 19, when you get to the 10th verse, after the angel of the Lord gives this prophetic word to John. John falls down. To worship the angel and the angel say, get up. Because yeah. I am thy brother, a fellow servant who has the testimony of Jesus. And he says, in the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And the Lord said this to me. He said that the spirit of prophecy is getting ready to flood the church. Okay. He said, just the way. In 1906, that the Spirit of the Lord came in and flooded the church and people began to speak in tongues. And we got stuck with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says tongues is to edify you, not the church. He says, don't reject speaking in tongues, but I would rather you prophesy. Why? Because prophecy does three things. Three things. First Corinthians 14 and 3, it says that prophecy edifies. It means it builds up or strengthens the entire body. It says it exhorts. The original Greek word for exhort means to invite in. Not just to encourage, to invite. What are you being invited to? The marriage. Supper of the Lamb. 
It means to comfort, to give you peace. The church is moving. I want you, I want you to hear me. We got stuck for a century fussing over speaking in tongues. And God is saying in the scripture over and over and over, I would rather you prophesy. I ain't never heard any churches arguing over prophecy. Why? Because you can't fake prophecy. You can fake tongues. Oh, ain't no, I don't need no amens this morning. I know God telling the truth this morning. He said, I said, God, how do you prepare us? And he says, the spirit of prophecy. What happens when there's a real spirit of prophecy in the church? They fall down and worship God. Oh, y'all don't believe me? 1 Corinthians 14, 22, 25. Now, this got me. It says, wherefore tongues are signed not to them that believe. He says, but to them that believe not. The spirit fell on a church in early 1900s because we were coming out of slavery. We were moving into Jim Crow. The, the country was in unrest. The world was in unrest. And the spirit fell on the body of church, the body of Christ, believers, that people were trying to believe because it was hard believing. And tongues were personal to the believer or to the unbeliever so they could believe. When our church first started, we had a lot of people who didn't really know Jesus. What happened in our church? In a movie theater, we had this outbreak of people just being filled with tongues. And just speaking, nobody was laying hands on nobody. We were just in, we in the movie theater with butt on the floor and popcorn and, 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 and God just fell on our church. We had a lot of people who didn't really know or understand who Christ was. But, but me and many of us, we wanted that to keep on happening because we didn't know we had to grow up. No, see, we want to just keep speaking in tongues, keep speaking in tongues. But this Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if the whole church speak in tongues, a non-believer come in and think you crazy. That's Bible. It says that if somebody come in that don't believe and all y'all just run around here speaking in tongues, they're going to think you mad. And many people think we crazy. Because that's what many of the churches have done for years. But it's okay because we didn't have understanding. God's taking us because he's preparing us. And, and, and I read the scripture and it never made sense to me. He says, but prophecy serves not them that believe not. It serves them which believe. It serves or it is beneficial to the believer, not me personally, but for me as a believer being used of God. It still benefits me personally, but this is about edifying the whole church. Now, I want to read this. 1 Corinthians 14, 23. If therefore the whole church come together in one place and all speak with tongues, I just mentioned that, and they come in, those are unlearned unbelievers, would they not say you are mad? But if all prophesy and come in, and one that believeth not or is unlearned, he is convinced of all, he's judged of all, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face will worship God and report or tell others or declare that God is in you of a truth. When you look at the book of Revelations and the beast and the four and 20 or the 24 elders, they fall down and they worship God. And you look at this, the whole, this, this prophetic view that John is getting it's about them coming to this place where they acknowledge that he is who he say he is, that he is God, that he is Lord, and they're worshiping God and they're honoring God. But the reality is, for many of us, we have such difficulty really worshiping God. Not that you're a bad person, but it's that we haven't moved from flesh to spirit. It is, it is see, see, when 
the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. When I have proof of him, I worship him. When I have proof of God, I don't need you to tell me to worship. When I have proof of him, I'll do it at home. I'll do it, on, I'll do it in my car. I'll do it in a restaurant. When I have proof of him, I don't need no music. I don't need no preacher. When I have proof of him, why? Because I see and I know for myself that he is God. Don't nobody have to say nothing to me, do anything to me, touch me, pump me, prime me. But when the spirit of, when God is speaking, God said this to me. He, he said it clear. He said the work that you and your wife are doing, it ain't about a project. It ain't about your church. It's about the prophetic word of God coming to pass so people can see me. See, what you don't know is that the only reason, the only reason, the only reason we still stand in is because he told us it would happen before it happened. We don't have this great resolve, this great faith more than anybody else. We got a prophetic word. God spoke to my wife and she drew it out in detail and said, this is what God said and we believe God. Because when you know in advance, <laughs> I don't care how big you are. If God say to me, you're going to win the fight, I'm be like, what you going to do? <laughs> Y'all scared because you ain't sure of the outcome. See, when you know in advance that the cancer ain't going to kill you, or you know in advance that they ain't really going to evict you, when you know in advance, when... Now... I'm not saying, it's just, listen, I told you I had this conversation with God. I said, all that God did for Abel, Cain still killed him. You see, we misinterpret Christianity. Christianity don't mean stuff ain't going to happen in your life. I just know whatever God say going to happen. Now, so some stuff he ain't said to me, so I don't know what's going to happen. But the stuff that he's spoken. Yeah, it's just the stuff he spoke. See, we get it wrong. It says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. No, faith come by hearing God's word. Him speaking, not just you talking. See, when God speaks in the church prophetically, and I say to you, see, see, listen, God said this to me. If you got a loved one on drugs, and God reveals to you that they're going to get off of drugs, you're not going to treat them like they're on drugs. The reason you treat them bad because you don't think they're going to change. Think about, see, when you lack the real power of God operating in your life and in your church, you acting in the flesh. And flesh don't like people. Flesh won't endure nothing. Flesh ain't nice. Flesh ain't kind. Flesh is offended. Flesh is mad. Flesh. But if God told me, He's going to elevate me. I ain't waiting on you to elevate me. So either if, you, either if you don't like me or you do, it don't matter. God already told me. <laughs> somebody, somebody need to hear me. See, see, you are living this life as a believer absent of the power of God. So you're always offended. You always feel a certain way. You're always like, this. they don't like me, they You need a prophetic word, not from a preacher that flew in on a jet. I'm talking about God speaking in your church by a body of believers. I'm standing because I have a word to stand on. It ain't generic, it's specific. Specific. And when it's specific, I ain't scared of you. Yeah. <laughs> when it's specific, it don't, I don't need validation from you. When it's specific, I don't need nobody else's approval. When it's specific. If God said, y'all going to make it. I almost said it. I almost said it. My H word. The kids tell me don't say it because I was going to say, I don't give a. If God said, he's going to restore. Don't he do it? 
Don't he do it? I can't mess with angels. She's going to make me cry. Look, look. That some things been spoken over our lives. If it's specific, I don't know when it's going to happen. But that's where faith comes in. Faith is for a specific word for a specific person. Chris, it don't matter what's happening to somebody else. You got a word. It is specific. You hear me? Just believe it. Walk in it. Somebody else may not see it. But you see it. See, prophecy, not only do I hear it, I see it. We saw Springwood finished already. (laughs) When there's the spirit of prophecy in the church. And I ain't talking about this made up stuff. You're going to get a car, you're going to get a house. Like you, can, you can have that. Like somebody can have a real word for you because it's impacting your life to reveal God to you. But all this today, you're going to get a car. Come. Look, I want to know that I'm going to get that fine linen. Y'all missed that. In Revelation, it says that the church made herself ready. And it was granted fine white linen. And this fine linen is the righteousness of his servants. So when we come to church, we all prophesy. It said it reveals the secrets of the heart. People walking in our churches, y'all, looking for God, but they finding us. Because ain't nothing being revealed. God said if the church prophesied, if there's a spirit of prophecy in the church, it's going to give them evidence of Jesus. It says that they're going to know of a truth that God is in you. I want to tell y'all, quit being impressed with people's gifts. I don't care how good you sing, play, dance, preach. That don't mean nothing. Paul says, I was gifted, but I closed my mouth. Go to John with me, chapter 4. Verse 21. I want to I want to get this because I'm running out of time. Y'all got about 10 minutes. I want to go to this John. Preparing church. Prophetic church. Pure, not in blameless or faultless or nothing wrong. But I, I want to deal with this. This is about the woman at the well. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to start at verse 21. I want to read it. But give you a little backdrop. She's at the well. She's a Samaritan woman. And um, the law says that Jewish people shouldn't be talking to uh, people of Samaria. Jesus is having this conversation with her. And I want to pick up at verse 21. And this is after Jesus begins to (laughs) talk to her about her life. You know, she she didn't had uh, five husbands and the one she went now ain't her husband. Now, she hadn't told Jesus this, but he's acting and operating in the spirit of prophecy. Jesus said in her woman, she, so she tells Jesus, we worship Abraham. Our fathers worshiped Abraham, and she was like, we worshiped on this mountain. And Jesus' response, it was kind of funny to me. He says, the hour cometh. Well, first he told her she don't even know what she's worshiping. He said, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. Like, you don't even know what you're worshiping. 
But we know what we worship for salvation of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is the spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. When Jesus is talking about this. And he talks about real worship before God. True comes from a word that means nothing concealed. Nothing hidden. The reason God told me to read um, the prophecy I received. We started this church doing cell groups with the idea that we were going to be honest with each other. We started this church and it was hard and it's been hard and it turned some people off because they'd be like, y'all getting everybody business. And, and we were just trying to be obedient. But we started this church doing these cell groups because it was about which we didn't know at the time us walking in truth with one another. Yeah. Authentic truth. Like we know all of each other mess, not to judge. But and then we got to the point where it don't matter what you think of me. The truth is I'm trying to be free. So Kim did a testimony today, praise God, and she was talking on there, and Kim was one of the people, and, and, and she was talking about not going to sell, and she wouldn't go for a long time, but her husband was going, and, 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 and so to see her do that video, but what we didn't understand was that God was preparing us. See, cell group ain't about you fellowshipping with your friends. I mean, you get a little of that. But cell group is about you dealing with your truth. See, we've been taught in church to hide, and you can't worship God when you're hiding. Amen. See, we, we live these lives hidden from one another because we don't want to know, nobody know that I'm struggling with smoking, struggling with fornication, struggling with lying, struggling with this, struggling with that. And so I try to present this picture of a Christian, but your life raggedy. But everybody knows it's raggedy because when you walk in with Christ prophetically, one of the things he does is called a word of knowledge. He reveals stuff to people. Yes. <laughs> and so the church that's called that will be prepared for the marriage supper of the Lamb is the church that's true. True worshipers. This ain't about perfection. You're covering up and hiding things that's going to exclude you. Somebody hear me. This has never been about knowing your business. Don't nobody care about your business. This is about you getting free. I'm going to tell you in sale group that I cuss somebody out because I don't want to do it no more. Not because I'm trying to hide and I ain't cuss nobody. I'm talking about somebody else. But I'm talking about. God said, when that, that, that uh, couple gave us this prophetic word 12 years ago, I just, I didn't know what it meant. So I just kind of put it to the side. And so many of you in here don't go to cell group, don't participate, don't do it, but don't understand he sent you here because you told God you wanted to be free. But the method it takes to be free, you rejecting it. You prayed and prayed and prayed. God, I'm sick of church. I'm tired. I'm tired. There's all these fake people, fake people, but you the fake one. Because you won't tell nobody what's real with you. You angry, you mad, you upset, you, you, you just, you want to slap everybody, you want to cuss it. So you're doing this stuff when you ain't around the church. Somebody step on your toe, you give it to them. <laughs> Cussing your kids out, your spouse out. You, you, but you at church singing, well, that worship ain't real. Oh, I'm preaching now, I don't care. Because I'm, I'm free. I am free and free indeed. So what I'm saying to you is you here because God trying to break that false fleshly religious spirit on you. Because the church has to be true worshipers if you're going to really get a seat at the table. Yeah. Don't matter if you like what I'm saying. God has already shown me the outcome. Yeah. I've been called. I knew when God called me that he said to me that I'm giving you a ministry yeah. that's going to bring deliverance to people. I just didn't know it was going to be this hard. Yeah. <laughs> My wife, real sweet. I'd be mad. <laughs> but hear me, y'all. God 
God is working. I can point out to many people in this church that have gotten free. They were mad at us for a season. It was okay because I knew what he showed us. Some of y'all on the edge right now, I think I'm leaving this church. I'm getting out. They, they, they just get on my, we are supposed to press you. We are supposed to challenge you. We're supposed to hold you. If you're lying, we're going to say it. If you're fornicating, we're going to say it. If you're stealing, we, and you can be doing it in the dark, but when the church is prophetic, somebody going to get up and be like, I saw you in my dreams last night. I, I knew. See, that's when you know the church is working. Well, I ain't the only one saw you in the dream. Last night, 10 of us dreamed about you. And we knew that the woman house you was over ain't your wife. I saw you. I know that's why some people coming out church be like, they scared me. I'm going out of here. But I'm trying to tell you, God is preparing us for the marriage supper. Would you rather find out now or when you're at the table with the wrong garment on? Jude chapter 23 says we should hate garments spotted with the flesh. Snatching some, pulling some out the fire. That's our assignment. If your garment is spotty, you need to get clean. You came here. Tell me you wanted a different church, but you really wanted the same church with some people that weren't going to say nothing. Well, you're in the wrong place. You came here because you told the Lord, I want to be free. I want to be different. I want to stop doing this. I want to, listen. We're not going to judge you because you're lying, fornicating, committing adultery, living a homosexual life. Ain't nobody going to judge you. We're just trying to get the spots off. Because everybody that walked in this door, all of us, all of us, we came here because our family's jacked up. We came here because I'm jacked up. I came here because we was a certain way. We came here because we was doing church and it wasn't helping me. I know the scriptures. I can quote them all. Some of y'all can prophesy or lie. But some of y'all, you've been in this for a long time and your life ain't working. Your marriage jacked up. Your finances jacked up. You mean and angry and nasty. We need truth. Nobody, listen, everybody can see it. You ain't the great, maybe it's prophetic you're going to be the great one later, but not today you ain't. You need to join the toe up club. From the floor, my wife said, look, y'all, I got 29 seconds. I think it's enough. Y'all stand up. Come on. Y'all stand up. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. I prayed y'all in here this morning. I said, God, if you're going to make me say this, they better come to church. He said, who you here? <laughs> Listen, I want you to be excited, though. All of that, now I say be excited. Oh, we got to do offering, too, so. I almost forgot. Benita, just saw Benita. But I want to say this in all sincerity. God ain't judged us. God's come to save us. God's coming to deliver us. So anybody here, okay, what you in? What's going on? God is not judging you or me or any of us. He's speaking to us because when the day comes, when the day of the Lord comes and, and Jesus comes through the clouds, it says he's coming with an army from heaven. And they're going to have on that same fine white linen. And it says that he's going to have a sword in his mouth. And his name is the word of God. But they're coming first for dinner. Yes, sir. They're coming for the mayor supper of the lamb. And you invited. But we need to make sure we got the right robe on. So God just trying to get us ready. Some of y'all going through some stuff right now that some truth has been uncovered in your lives. And it ain't easy. But I'm telling you, don't faint. 
Come on, let God have his perfect work in your life. Don't faint. You came here because God knew that you was going to have to deal with some hard truth and there's some people crazy enough to stand with you. Don't faint. Don't run. Don't quit. You prayed a prayer and you prayed and you cried and God heard you and he answering you now. Don't faint. Don't faint, church. Don't faint. God loves you. He heard you. He is not going to leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to abandon you. Don't faint. The spirit of prophecy has come so that the secrets of your heart can be revealed so that you can fall down and worship God. Because you got to be able to worship him now before that day. Help me, Lord. I, I, I just, I just, I see some people here. Thank you, God. I know it seems hard. Mm. I know it seems hard. I know it seems unfair. That's the word I keep hearing. Be fair. You're thinking about it being unfair because you've tried to do what God has asked you to do and it seems unfair right now but I'm telling you that God is purifying you and what you think is unfair God going to get all the glory yeah he going to get all the don't faint listen please do not turn back you almost through the process don't quit I hear your voice saying, God, I am tired. But his grace, his grace is sufficient. Yeah. It's enough. His grace is enough. His grace is enough. His grace is sufficient for you. Just don't faint, y'all. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want everybody to bow their heads in prayer real quick. We'll do offering in one minute. I'm going to get y'all out of here. I just want y'all to begin to pray. Just come on, pray with me. Come on, begin to pray. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. I want you to surrender to God. Begin to pray. If there's anybody here, keep praying. Don't look up. Don't look at nobody. If there's anybody here that feel God calling them, they have not been baptized you want to give your life or surrender your life and you hear the Lord calling you now and you say Lord I need to be baptized lift your hands just lift your hand if you say Lord I need to be baptized I need to be a part of, part of this body of believers lift your hand if that's you if that's you if anybody here is not because you got to be in Christ keep praying keep praying keep praying keep praying if there's anybody here that you are not a part of a church or maybe you're in the, between you in the middle and you're trying to figure out what God is doing, I can't speak for other people's church. I just know what he's doing at all and all. Right? I, I don't know what God is doing at other churches. But if you're here and you feel like God is calling you to this church to be a part of this ministry, to serve, and to get free, and you're saying, Lord, today is the day. I want to be a part of this. Just lift your hand. We'll have one of our greeters or ministers get your information. Lift your hand so we can see you. If you're here and you're saying, Lord, I know you're drawing me here. If you're online, if you're virtual and you're watching and, and you're raising your hand now, wherever you are, and you're saying, I want to be baptized. I want to be a part of this church. I want to send you to our website. It's randrchurch.org. And you see a button that says register for new members. We'll give you information or register as an online. Maybe out of state, you can register as an online member. We just want to walk with you in truth, in love and truth. Bless you, God. Bless you, God. Y'all, we're in a good place. God is speaking. Because in some places, the he ain't speaking. We're in a good place. I mean, he's trying to speak, but they're not listening. We're in a good place. God is speaking, and we are listening. If 
Father God, I want to say thank you. I thank you for everybody that's here this morning. I thank you for a word of prophecy, God, that you would continue to pour out on our church as we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. I thank you, God, for allowing us to be purified and that we can be those true worshipers that worship you in spirit and truth. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you in Jesus' name.